Hello fellow crafters, I'm Karen, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make this string art of a sunset behind a city skyline. You don't need many materials and tools to do this particular craft, but the ones that you will need are up on the screen. If you choose to do a silhouette with a sky behind it, then the primary color of embroidery floss that you'll need is going to be black, but the other colors are really up to you. I'm aiming for more of a sunset sort of look, so I'm going to be using a lot of the reds, orange, and yellows. The only other primary choice you'll have to make is what board you're going to use. You can choose to finish it or leave it unfinished, and I'm doing this particular one unfinished so you won't see any paint or stain out there. String art crafts boil down to three main steps. Sketching, nailing, and stringing. In that sketching phase, you're making all of your primary decisions about the final product. One thing that's maybe the most important to keep in mind is that you have to think in larger uh, concepts. You can't do anything very small and detailed because it's too challenging to try and put the nails really close together and have any sort of distinction there. So for my city silhouette, it's convenient because the silhouette allows you to do entirely black where you might otherwise have to do detail, but we will have some color coming in in the sky. To do the research phase of this, I was mostly looking up pictures of city skylines and silhouettes and things of that nature and observing the shapes of buildings. You want to make sure that you're not doing anything too complicated, but you do want to have enough variation that things don't look too square. Now, the general outline is going to be formed by your buildings, and you have to make a choice about whether you're trying to do a specific city skyline or if you're doing something more generic like I am. And if you are doing something specific, then what buildings you're going to have in it. If you want it to be identifiable as Paris, then you probably ought to have the Eiffel Tower in it. But if you want it to just be a city, then it doesn't really matter what your buildings look like precisely. So when you're doing your sketch, uh, you want to create sort of a general outline. I actually started with a very loose sketch that was just the high and low points. Um, so it was very squiggly and not building shaped at all but it just identified where I want the tall buildings, where I want the short buildings. From there, I was able to fill in the actual buildings, and I'll show you on the screen here what my design looks like and which buildings I drew in which order. I would recommend that you start with the largest or tallest buildings and work to the smaller ones. It's a little bit easier to fill in the space that way. If you're going to have a focal point, like a primary building to look at, you want that to be slightly off-center, generally speaking. It doesn't look as good if it's perfectly centered. Um, obviously there would be exceptions to that, but it's a little bit easier if it's off-center. And then once you have your primary buildings drawn in, you can draw connecting lines between them, which are maybe horizontal, maybe angled in different places. They're just sort of filling in the roofs of other buildings that are in between. Once you have your template drawn out, and I did mine on cardstock, then you can trace it onto your final paper, unless what you were drawing on originally is your final paper. I like to put the final copy of my drawing onto graph paper because it makes spacing out the nails really simple. So for my paper here, I have it cut down to the exact size of my board, and I do this to make sure that I don't exceed the limits of the board with my drawing. Then the last step you have to do for the drawing stage is to mark where your nails are going to go. I recommend you do this in advance of actually putting the nails in so that you don't have to make those decisions when you're putting in the nails. You can just do it now and I just put little dots along the outline. And you'll want to make sure you do your outer outline so within the edges of the board but whatever is going to be your outer limits of the color as, as well as the actual skyline of the city. The easiest place to start is at the corners. Anywhere that the string is going to need to change directions, you're going to need to have a nail. After that, you can try bisecting or just generally evenly dividing the areas that you have left in between those corner nails. As you're going, think carefully about the nail heads because if you have two dots that are too close together and the nail heads will hit, it's going to be very challenging to put the string in later and it's not really necessary to have the nails that close together anyway. You'll also want to keep in mind symmetry as you do this. If I have two sides of a building, generally speaking, I'll try to put the nails in the same positions. Although if the building is really narrow or something like that, then I might 
um, put them off set so that it's easier to put the nails in in the first place. If you want to do any finishing work on your board, like painting or staining, you'll want to do it before you put the nails in. But if, like me, you're going to leave it plain, then the next step is to tape the paper to the board. I do this because it allows me to be really precise, and the little bits of paper that get held into the board by the nails are pretty negligible, and you can pull out anything that's noticeable later. So I've already done that taping process, and I can go ahead on to the nailing now. I have this on a piece of foam just to reduce the impact to my table. Um, and I recommend that you use a tack hammer. It's got this small square end and it's fairly it's a fairly small head. So the benefit is that you can get into sort of those tight spaces and the hammer is not too unwieldy. But you can use any hammer you want as long as it puts in the nail. And the nails that I'm using are, um, these are 19 by half inch. So these are um, pretty small nails, but they're enough to hold the string in place and not look too large in the end. Okay, so with the nails put in, all we have to do is remove the paper and I just tear the paper up in this process. I'm not looking to preserve it in any way because I used a template. So you're just trying to get as much of the paper as possible off of it and you want to look carefully around the bases of the nails while you're doing that. I needed to use a pair of pliers to get a few of the little tiny pieces out, but now that it's nice and cleaned up, we are ready to put the string on. I try to start and end my string at sort of inconspicuous places. So I rarely put it on an outside corner, um, but I'll try to start it in like the second nail in or something like that. And then I just tie it to the nail. I use a little bit of glue, or you could probably use some clear nail polish to just um, hold those ends of the string together. And then I cut the end pretty close to the nail head. Your goal is kind of just to make pretty triangles and quadrilaterals as you're doing this. You don't want to have any wide open gaps and you don't want to have your strings too close together, but you want to aim for sort of a random but balanced look to it. I don't typically follow any sort of pattern. I'm actually usually trying to avoid a pattern, although you'll see when I get to the reflection on the water that I did actually use a little bit of symmetry down there on purpose. With this color here, I'm starting to add some occasional rays of sunlight. I did this as much to get good angles to fill in sort of gaps in the string as I did to communicate the idea of the sun. And I think it, it added a little bit of brightness to the top of the sky, which worked out really well. So when I start, started this sunset, I wanted to work from the center to the outside so that the brightest points looked a little bit further away than the darker top edges. And you want it to look like it's fading between the colors. So you want to try and layer them a little bit and you'll put denser string where it is exclusively that color and then less dense string where they overlap. So in the end I'll end up using very little of my darkest color. The reflection in the water is actually only going to get three of the five colors that I use in the sky. I did this for a couple of reasons, partly to look a little bit more muted and darker, and partly just to reduce how many colors of string I needed to use in the water. So I did not use my brightest color, and I did not use my second darkest color. So I used my second, third, and fifth. You'll want to use the string to form an outer outline of the whole picture. I did this on the outside of the silhouette of the city and then around the outer edges. You'll want to pay attention to which side of the nail the string is on so that the string defines the edge as opposed to the nails. You'll see this especially on the silhouette of the city where I went around the entire black area with an outline on the outer edges of the nails so that the silhouette would stick out from the colored sky and water. You can see that I tried to do a little bit of a straight line pattern in the water to see if it would look like the 
uh, ripples in the water and I ended up not liking it so I pulled that out and went with the sort of standard triangle direction. And then the last thing I would say is that tweezers are going to be your best friend in this process. Sometimes the string will get partially around the nail head but not all the way around the nail head and you'll need to get a couple of those little threads around. Uh, and a pair of fine tweezers are going to be your best bet at getting those back on the nail head, although you have to be really careful that you don't accidentally break one of those strings when you're doing that. And then of course the tweezers help with moving the string around when you need to tie those knots at the end because it is usually more crowded than it was when you first started tying the string. And that's really all there is to it. Thanks for supporting Tickled Fancy Crafting by watching this video. Click the like button to let me know that you enjoy the content and subscribe to see new Tickled Fancy Crafting videos in your feed. If you'd like to be informed directly about the content, ring the notifications bell. Comment with crafts that you would like to see in the future. And remember, you can make this.